What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and today I'm going to answer these five sonography questions that one of you guys, lovely subscribers, had commented in one of my recent videos. So with that being said, we're going to answer those five questions and we're going to just jump right into it. So the first question is about licensing and they asked if sonographers can work in any state with the correct licensing or is it like nursing where there are state boards? So usually in the United States, we are registered by ARDMS. They are the ones that we get credentials with after our names to be able to work in the field. Now I just did some research and there are some states and places where there is no law that you need to have a license. But with that being said, most places in the United States will require you to be registered through ARDMS and if you are registered in ARDMS, a lot of the times you can get it in one state and then go to another state and work there still. It is pretty much not like nursing where you have to take a state board exam in each state. So if I wanted to move to Florida, let's say, or if I wanted to move to California, well, I live in Vegas and I took my ARDMS board exams here in Vegas, but those credentials will still work in California, in Florida, in any other state. For the most part, you can work in any state with the ARDMS certifications. If you go to ARDMS.org, you can see all of the information on there on how to get registered and where it will work. And pretty much it works everywhere in the United States. I don't know what it's like in Canada or anywhere else in the world, but that's what it's like here in the US. The second question is about patients who are melting down during the exam or before you even start the exam, patients who are refusing the exam. They want to know who does it fall on afterwards if the patient is refusing. Are the doctors mad at us for the techs not being able to do it? Or is it the patient's right to refuse? This is kind of a tricky question, but if a patient is completely refusing and they won't let you touch them, you don't want to get hurt yourself. There are different situations where this may happen. If a patient is combative and they are about to like punch you, kick you, hit you, you need to keep yourself safe first and foremost. So you don't need to do that exam right then and there. If you're in a hospital setting, which is mostly where this will happen to you, you let the nurse know, you let the ordering doctor know. It is not your fault if you can't get an exam done. The patient is not allowing you to do your job correctly and safely, so they should be able to understand. Sometimes you can tell them and they'll give them some medication and you can come try and scan them later. Sometimes they just completely cancel the exam. So it does not hurt you or fall on you if you can't get the exam done. The ordering doctor usually understands. Now, if you are in an outpatient place and someone refuses or doesn't want to do it, most of the time they just won't show up because in an outpatient place, these patients are scheduled to do these exams and they have to come there and get it done. But say they get all the way to your room and they decide they don't want it anymore, that is the patient's right. The patient has the right to refuse an exam and they don't have to do the exam you just let the ordering doctor know because the patient first and foremost it's their body and if they don't want to be touched if they don't want you to do the exam you just do your best to explain to them that you're just trying to do your job trying to help the patient you are trying to let these patients know that you're just trying to help them but at the end of the day if they don't want the exam done then don't even try don't even try to force it on them because that should not be done by you the ordering doctor is the one that really needs to convince them and you can do your best to try to you know make them know that you know they should probably get this exam done but if a patient is telling you straight up no i say just leave it alone and you let the ordering doctor know then they can deal with it question number three do you diagnose or does a doctor diagnose and if you don't diagnose then what goes in your written report then so that's a good question. Us as sonographers, we are pretty much the doctor's eyes. We are the photographers. We take diagnostic images. We use the machine and we are detectives and we look all over the body for what's going on. These orders are coming through because there's something, there's an indication, there is something we need to figure out and find out.
find out, hey, what's happening here? What's causing all this pain? Or what is the problem? We are actually not diagnosing these patients. We are taking the images to help the radiologist be able to see what's happening so that the ordering doctor, the ordering physician of the exam can properly diagnose the patient. So the hospital, the outpatient facilities, doctors, nurses, we all work together to try to figure out what's happening with this patient. But us as ultrasound technologists, we don't actually diagnose. We can't sit here and diagnose you with cancer. We cannot sit here and diagnose you with a blood clot. We can be able to see if something's potentially a cancer and we can be able to see blood clots on our ultrasound exam, but I am not the one who's gonna tell you or diagnose you or let you know what's going on. That is usually done by the ordering doctor. We do not get paid enough to do all of that, to diagnose the patient. We don't have the medical background to diagnose these patients, even though we pretty much know what we're looking at. We don't know the whole story about this patient, so we can't really diagnose them. It is not under our practice to diagnose patients. We are helping the radiologist help the ordering physician diagnose these patients. What do we write in our reports? Well, we describe. We describe what we see. We can state if we see a non-occlusive thrombus in the femoral vein. We help the radiologists figure out whatever's going on, and then they help the doctors figure out, okay, this is the problem. This is what's causing it. So in my medical practice, I believe you have this. That's the doctor's job. The doctor's job is to diagnose, and our job is to look at things in the body and figure out what it looks like and why it looks like that. Now, in our reports, for example, for a kidney ultrasound, these patients are gonna come in with elevated kidney function tests. So what are they gonna do? Order a kidney ultrasound. What are we gonna do as ultrasound techs? We're gonna follow our protocol, look at the bladder, aorta, IVC, kidneys, and we're gonna describe what we see with those images. So the IVC, I'm gonna say it's patent because I see that it's got blood flow. The aorta, I'm gonna say it's patent because I see there's blood flow and I don't see any aneurysms. So I'm not gonna describe it as there being any sort of abnormalities. But when I get to the kidneys, are they echogenic? Are they bright? Bright and echogenic, meaning there may be something going on with a medical renal disease type of issue. And is there a cyst? Is there a mass? Is there blood flow to the kidneys? These are things we're gonna describe on our worksheet. Another example is if we're doing a lower extremity venous, we're gonna check to see if there's any blood clots through those legs. There's a protocol that we follow, and if we see any abnormalities, we describe them. Non-occlusive thrombus, occlusive thrombus, echogenic linear structure, tortuous vessels. We're just gonna describe everything that we see. And a lot of times you get exams that are normal. So most of the time you will say, exam is within normal limits. You don't see anything going on. And that's what you want to see. You wanna see that there's nothing going on. But when there are things going on, like you see a mass in the kidney, I'm gonna say, hey, there's something in the kidney. I'm gonna describe it with the ultrasound terminology that you learn. And then I'm gonna send it to the radiologist. Radiologist is gonna stay what they think it is, what it potentially is, if it's a mass, cyst, and then they are going to send those results to the ordering doctor who is going to use all that information to diagnose the patient. It's all steps, different steps that the patient's going to go through to figure out, okay, what's going on? Is there a problem that we can fix right now? Or is it something that we can fix over time? And no, we do not diagnose, we just describe. The fourth question is, have you ever been unable to find the correct images like you've been trying and trying and trying to find the correct image or organ and you just can't find it what do you do in that situation yes there are plenty of times where you can't see something there are people with very large body habitus and sometimes you just can't see some features sometimes the pancreas isn't seen sometimes you can't see the distal femoral vein sometimes the arm is so swollen you can't see the basilic Fame. You know, it all just depends. You don't want to sit there and try and try and try for 30, 45 minutes to an hour if you really can't get something. But you want to do your best to try finding what it is you need to find because you are the doctor's eyes and if you don't see it, then the doctor doesn't see it. I know it seems really stressful at that point, but when you get more experience, you'll realize there are some things you just can't see and ultrasound is not magic. You're not going to be able to see every person every organ, every vessel clearly. You're not gonna be able to see things where extreme amount of gas covers it. So, you know, you just do your best. You have to use 
your critical thinking and you have to use common sense to realize like hey i just probably can't get this or if a patient is like unable to turn on their side and you can't get anyone to help you turn this patient the best thing you can do is try your best to find these images or take pictures of the area of the images and sometimes you just leave it at that there are other modalities that will help see things much better than ultrasound cat scan nuclear medicine mri x-ray sometimes is better than an ultrasound for certain things so you know it just depends on what you're looking for and there have been times where i couldn't see a left kidney tonight i could not see a spleen on someone but this patient was a wheelchair bound patient we couldn't turn the patient and they will have other opportunities to go to cat scan or sometimes it's just it is what it is but at the end of the day you always just want to do your best try your best and on your worksheet if you really can't get something explain why you couldn't get it and you have to let them know that you really tried to get it and just you couldn't get it I don't want you to try to kill yourself just to get something that you probably won't see it is possible we are not perfect we don't see everything and we can't see everything so just don't be too hard on yourself when you really can't get something but like i said you need to try as hard as you can to get the images that you need as long as you know inside that you tried your hardest that's what matters now that question kind of leads into question number five which is how does patient obesity factor into the ultrasound exam does it make it difficult how do you get through those well patient obesity it is a very very common thing here that we see in the hospital there are patients that i've scanned that are over 300 400 500 and 600 pounds so you will get those kinds of patients now a lot of times there may be limited exams that you're going to do on these patients but you can try your hardest to see things and you can probably see it i have done venous ultrasounds and abdominal ultrasounds on 600 pound patients and if i can do that especially even a renal if i can do that you know it's possible to do that on anyone less than 600 pounds now i'm not saying that you're gonna see everything all the time on every single one of those patients but remember we're working with sound waves here sound waves travel and the more depth it travels the harder it is so your machines can only go to so much depth now when you are having that large of a patient body habitus you're going to have to adjust the settings you're going to have to change your probe you're going to have to see if they can turn see if they can help you position themselves see if you have a cna or a nurse or another tech that can help you there are times where i put the machine on the right side and i go all the way over to the left side i scan pushing really hard on underneath the left side and then I go back to the machine and I cine loop back and I take the picture. We do what we can, we do our best. Like I said in the question before, we are not perfect, we are not gonna see everything and the obesity factors just makes it that much harder because sound waves can only travel so fast and so much. But at the end of the day, as long as you're doing your best and you're trying your hardest, a lot of these situations doctors understand. Now doctors should not expect you to find everything on large body habitus patients. They should understand that you're probably going to have a difficult time and that it's going to be pretty limited. Always on your worksheets just mention if it was a difficult exam or if it was a limited exam. But to be honest those exams are really tough. You don't want to hurt your shoulder or break your back or your body because that is important. So always always try to do your best. Try to see if the patient can help you or if you can get any help at all whatsoever. But do not kill yourself trying to scan these patients because it is very difficult. And at the end of the day the ultrasound machine can only see so much. So just do your best. Try your hardest and know that you are trying your best to help these patients with whatever they're going through. So that's the end of the video. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will answer them as fast as I can. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video. Stay positive, be kind to one another, and have a good day.